Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's ARTIG webinar on bus service improvement plans and how you can use the analysed bus open data to support them. Um, we're supported this afternoon by ETO World, who are going to provide the uh, the bulk of the content and the uh, and the how-to bits. Um, we are recording this session, so you can. Um, pass it on to uh, colleagues that can't join us live or you want to uh, review any bits later and we'll send you a link to uh, the recording uh, in the next couple of days when it's available online on the Artig YouTube channel. Um, we do want to make this as interactive as possible so please do um feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go along um and um we'll either answer them um, as we go um or we'll pick them up at the end um and answer them um in a more discussion type format but uh, but we do want to hear from you we do want to make sure that you actually get the information that you that you're wanting um, from this session rather than necessarily what we think you want to hear. So uh, please do feel free to ask questions. So um, a little bit about Artig for those of you that uh, haven't come across us before. Um, we're a membership body for public transport technology stakeholders. So everybody from operators to local authorities and system suppliers and consultants, anybody involved in public transport technology. Um, we are particularly interested in information technology. Um, so everything from uh, real-time systems, where uh, originally uh, our interest largely was all the way through to, uh, to how you present it, information on all sorts of things, digital um, and paper. Um, so we um, are supported by our members and funded by our members. Um, we uh, develop um, best practice guidance, good practice guides, as well as technical standards. Um, and a lot of the standards that you use on a day-to-day -day basis um, have at least their origin in, in RTIG. Um, we also um, spend a lot of time trying to make sure that um, not just our members, but everybody, many of you might not be members, um, understand what's going on and how to use uh, technology and what's going on in, in the public transport market at the moment. Um, and we work quite closely with uh, with governments, Department of Transport, who we're um, supporting with the analysed bus open data um, work that we're doing at the moment um, as an example of that. So that's enough about RTIG. Um, you've come to find out about bus service improvement plans. Um, they come out of um, the Bus Back Better National Bus Strategy. Um, you need to make sure your teeth are in before you can say that properly, um, which this was released um, earlier on this year. Um, it's a much fanfare. It's our first bus strategy ever. Um, in this country, so uh, that's good. Um, and in it, um, it's very explicit that local transport authorities and bus operators must work at, at some pace, um, and the timescales um, um, mean that, uh, yeah, people really do have to work quite quickly on this, um, need to work. So LTAs and bus operators need to work with local communities to plan and deliver um a bus service that is as integrated as possible um has multimodal tickets um has bus priority measures there's an awful lot of stuff in there um about making sure that buses get priority either through hard measures like bus lanes and things like that or traffic light priority um high quality information um in more places and consistent um, Lee provided um, so a lot of the areas that uh, that we're interested in um, from Artig's point of view um, and making sure that um, frequencies are as good as they can be and um, people can get to 
where they want to in the evenings and at weekends. Um, so certainly a lot of uh, aspiration there um, and some really big um, thinking there. Now, to achieve that, um, everybody has to put in place some bus service improvement plans. Um, and this sets out how people um, are going to um, improve bus services in an area um, and needs to be created with a combination of authorities and operators, along with consultation with um, local users and non-users um, to make sure that uh, the, their views and their needs and requirements are taken into account. Um, and these bus service improvement plans are quite a big deal because they're going to be largely how government uh, is going to decide um, on funding allocations um, in future. Um, so uh, most of you by now will have be well under the way with producing these um, improvement plans. Um, you've probably got drafts already um, because by the end of this month, you need to, to be publishing them. Um, and um, to um, enable the improvement plans to, to actually happen on the ground, you need to be entering into partnerships or franchising plans um, by the end of the financial year. So again, really not very long at all. Um, the strategy wasn't joking when it said people need to be working at pace. Um, so um, yeah, um, the the point of um, this session and some of the other ones that we've done is to try and help you um, work at pace and understand what you need to do and what is out there and available to you to help you um, with your improvement plans and your partnership or franchising plans. Um, there is some um, guidance on drafting um, improvement plans um, and there's a couple of things in there um, that I want to pick out. Um, first being uh, bus vehicle speed and congestion data. So you need to be um, able to report on that um, and bus uh, average journey times, both of which are things that the Bus Open Data Service Analyze uh, system can help you with, which is why we're putting this on this afternoon. Um, and as part of those plans, you need to be setting targets for journey time and reliability um, for um, cities and towns. Uh, again, something that the Analyze Bus Open Data Service can help you with. Um, and so we'll now move on to um, hear from Ito about how you could use the Analyze Bus Open Data Service to help you with your monitoring and development of your bus service improvement plans. So uh, I believe it's Dan that's going to be um, running you through that. Welcome, Dan. Hello everyone, cheers Tim for that intro. Um, I'll just share my screen. Cheers Tim. Um, I just wanted to introduce um, ETO World. Uh, so we're the Department for Transport's technical partner for the Bus Open Data Service and also the Analyze Bus Open Data Service as well. Um, I'm Dan Jones, I'm a product manager here at ETO. So I work with our development team and our designers and also speak to lots of um, users of our services in order to work out what, what we need to build next and how we do that. Um, Patrick, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, thanks. Thanks, Dan. So I'm Patrick Smallman. I'm the support engineer here at ETA World. So I predominantly carry out technical investigations into analyzed bus open data, as well as offer some support in the bus open data as well. I'll pass it on to Amy. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Bridge. I'm head of projects at ETO World, and I work with Dan and Patrick across the BODs and analyze bus open data programs um, that we work with DFT and KPMG on. Um, I will just say just before Dan carries on, um, if um, if anybody wants to, to actually follow during the webinar um, with analyze bus open data, um, with the service open. If you've previously accepted an invitation, you should have access to 
already and what I'll do is that I'll just send the URL in the chat in case you haven't got that to hand um, and in case you want to follow along. Um, if you're an authority or an operator who hasn't yet got access to ABOD then we can also arrange for you to have access and we can do that as the webinar gets underway so I'll also just um, post in the chat that if you would like us to send you an invitation as we get started then Patrick and I can arrange for that and so if you just send us your email in the chat um, then we'll send you an invitation right away it might just help um, if you're able to follow uh, the webinar in the Analyze Bus Open Data service itself and so I'll just post in the chat in a moment with um, with that info um, but yeah back to you Dan to carry on the the presentation. Thank you. Um, so I'll just run through what we want to cover today. I'll do a quick intro to um, analyze bus open data for those who haven't joined before or haven't used the service. Um, I then want to talk about how um, analyze bus open data can support um, BSIPs both now and, and in the future. Um, as a part of that, I want to talk about some upcoming functionality that, that'll be released in the next few weeks to do with um, what we call corridor monitoring and, and journey time analysis as well. Um, and then talk a little bit about not only what's next for ABLE in terms of that new functionality, but what potentially we can um, uh, add to the longer term roadmap in order to help with uh, bus service improvement plans. Um, I'll do a quick demo of some of the designs of, of that new functionality um, and also a very quick demo of the on-time performance section of the service as well. Um, then we can go into some some questions if they haven't been answered in the chat as we go along. So feel free to put them put your questions in the chat as we go. Um, just to sort of summarise what Analyze Bus Open Data is and, and also what BODS is itself, um, we essentially take in um, the trans exchange data, so that's the timetables data published on the Bus Open Data service, uh, the vehicle location data, which um, is in Siri BM format. Um, that's published by um, all the operators in England. Um, as it gets published, we take those two data sets and match them together to, to create one single data set um, from which we can do some analysis and we continuously archive that down um, throughout the length of the service as well. Um, within BODS, people can consume this data. So um, that data can be accessed in its raw format if needed. Um, via GTFS and GTFS RT formats if you'd prefer, um, or you can you can use the API to access um, the vehicle location data, the timetables data, and the fares data. Um, obviously today we're talking about analyzed bus open data, which is which is another consumer of this service. Um, and as a part of that, um, there are a variety of different bits of functionality that are listed here, such as feed monitoring, schedule adherence, and so on. Um, so the aims of ABOD, um, it's part of the DFT's ongoing investment in bus services. Um, it will support the recently announced national bus strategy. So we want to introduce functionality that can help support monitoring of those over time and monitoring of the bus service improvement plans. Um, it's hopefully going to help the government, local authorities and bus operators to perform existing bus data analysis in, in faster and easier ways. Um, hopefully we'll enable you to produce more accurate and detailed uh, performance reports. Um, we hope that it improves on collaboration between um, different organisations and, and helps to identify from that network improvement opportunities. Um, and obviously, as um, the kind of central government itself and the local government have access to this as well, hopefully it will inform transport policy and, and also compliance monitoring across the industry. Um, so, so far to shape the development of this service, we've we've run nearly 90 um, user interview sessions um, in three parts. So prior to the sort of main build at the end of last year, um, we did 40 or so interview sessions, a few process mapping workshops, um, some knowledge sharing sessions with, with people within the industry and, and also some strategy and policy workshops. That was before we built the sort of first couple of uh, main features within the service. Um, during that development period at, at the start of uh, this year, uh, we also continue to do 20-odd um, interview sessions and again more workshops, knowledge sharing sessions and, and policy workshops as well to make sure that the features that we're producing were, were help, as helpful as they could be. Um, 
And also since we've launched the service, we continue to reach out to people to get feedback on the service um, and also where people get in touch to talk about potential feature requests. We quite often will follow up and, and arrange a session to talk through that with people to understand in a bit more detail how we might be able to help in the future. Um, Patrick has been helping with a lot of support as well. So where you've got in touch with any issues that you, you might be experiencing, we've also um, reached out to you as well um, to either hopefully solve them or if not solve them, get some more feedback um, in order to, to make the service better for you um, in the future. Um, since launching this around nine months ago, we've onboarded about 500 users and that's across over 200 different organizations. Um, so there's about 120 operators on there, about 80 local authorities, um, and then two governance organizations, obviously DFT and DVSA in themselves can use this. Um, these numbers are growing all the time, but it kind of shows we have quite a large community of people using this service now. Um, and as well as all of those um, interview sessions we've been doing, um, your usage of the service also helps us to understand what we may be able to do better uh, as we build this out. So I just wanted to talk a bit about the existing functionality there. Um, so in terms of some newly introduced features, we um, recently introduced an on-time performance summary. So if you're a local authority with lots of different operators, you'll now be able to see a summary page where you can have all the operators in your area listed. Um, and you can also sort those by um, on-time performance metrics. Um, so you'll be able to quickly spot um, using some of the graphs there if um, any of that uh, on-time performance has changed over a period of time, um, which you can choose uh, from the date picker at the top of the page. And, and I'll show you that in some more detail later on. Um, we also introduced uh, some map-based on-time performance. Um, so this hopefully gives a kind of sort of geographical overview um, of the shape of the route, obviously of the order of the stops. Um, and, and what we're aiming to do is highlight um, where stops are either abnormally early or abnormally late departures along that route. Um, so the idea is you can easily draw your attention to areas that may need improvement. Um, and obviously you can use the map to assist you in, in looking at the sort of um, geography and the, and the network around there to see if if any improvements can be made um, and you can also via that map view average delays um, at each of those stops um, there's a variety of filters that you can use as well so you can view information for all stops timing points for particular days of the week for particular hours of the day and I'll walk through that um, in, in some detail shortly as Amy said I just wanted to kind of reiterate how to get access operators in your area or if you're an operator yourself so you must be providing uh, yeah. timetable and vehicle location data um, to the main pod service um, without that we can't really do much um, and then if you want to request an invitation please right. drop an email to that um, or in the chat mm. um, you'll receive an invitation that has okay. a 72 hour expiry on it if it expires then do let me know um, and if you're not seeing all the data you expect, um, if you believe okay, there's um, some data missing or not quite right, then please let us know. Uh, um, if you go back. Cheers. Um, so I just wanted to talk about the bus service improvement plans. Um, so obviously we understand any new functionality that we're about to introduce. It's, it's unlikely to affect the publishing of, of BSIPs that are happening probably right now. Um, we believe that the new functionality that's coming should be able to help with support support the monitoring of those plans over time. Um, it's also worth noting within Analyze Best Open Data, the exact same view of the data is made available um, both to authorities and operators. Um, obviously, operators are restricted just to the operator codes that, that they run, um, whereas authorities can see all of the operators um, working within their region. Um, so we hope that makes collaboration fairly easy because you've kind of got a common consistent base over which you can um, talk and, and create these plans and monitor them um, and so on. Um, so if you think about different metrics that may be included in bus service improvement plans, obviously um, Tim talked about the main ones such as vehicle speed, journey time and reliability. Um, there are potentially other things you may want to monitor over time. Um, and I'll talk about 
how some of these may may work into our roadmap later on. Um, but there are also things like passenger numbers. Um, in essentially, we could can get access to some of that information if it's provided um, in the occupancy fields in the Siri VM feeds. Um, we could start to look at fares information, um, potentially market share to other modes, uh, bus service frequency as well. That's a sort of main metric that, that we want to cover um, on the longer term roadmap. Um, and there are also things like bus stop network density and passenger satisfaction, um, which we may may not be able to help so much with within ABOD. Um, so as I said, in the longer term, many of those different metrics may be possible to cover within analyzed bus open data. Um, however, in the shorter term, we want to uh, focus on a few of those metrics that um, from our discussions are sort of the more common metrics that may be chosen um, to monitor within these plans. Um, so things like journey times and reliability, the two key ones and, and punctuality as well could be looked at. Um, so again, I'll go through a quick demo of this shortly, um, but in terms of punctuality and reliability, there, there are the um, features that I mentioned previously, um, and within those, you can see from a service level and a stop level, um, things like the number of scheduled departures versus the number of actual departures that we've recorded. Um, obviously, that relies on um, accurate Siri VM data, um, but you can start to see if some routes were sort of not served um, with the uh, number of services that were being expected. Um, and you can also use the map-based functionality to explore this on a sort of geographical level as well. Um, so what more can, can we start to offer? Um, so over time, we want to introduce um, the next level of functionality, which will be corridor creation and, and journey to time analysis. Um, so hopefully that will sort of start to tick off the one of the key metrics that the bus service improvement plans might want to monitor. Um, so the user of the service uh, will be able to create and save their own corridors um, that are relevant to them. Obviously, this will be done with the assistance of a map. Um, once these corridors are saved, they'll be saved to their organization. So within a local authority, you can sort of save those down um, and keep returning to them if you need to, um, and also between different team members as well. Um, metrics displayed for these corridors initially um, will focus on journey time along that corridor, um, but later we can expand those to focus on other uh, metrics within the BSIP guidance, things like frequency and reliability that I mentioned earlier. So I just will show you a couple of screenshots, but I'll walk through these in detail in a second. Um, we want to be able to allow you to build um, these corridors, see the average journey time, um, but also see things like the journey time um, across a specific period, um, and also the kind of spread of that journey time. So you can see the sort of maximum journey time, the minimum journey time, and, and the sort of um, spread of that journey time as well. Um, and also we want to allow you to see that aggregate, aggregated to the specific times of the day, specific day of the week and so on as as we have done um, with on time performance as well and then that will be broken down into the services that, that sort of run along that operator sorry run along that corridor so there may not be just a single service there may be multiple services that run along that corridor and you can see the metrics broken down um, by those different lines um, as well and you can select and create these corridors and save them down as I mentioned previously. So looking out into the longer term, um, the sort of next metrics that we have been looking at to cover on our roadmap um, are frequency, so that would be the sort of next one that can be looked at in terms of excess wait time, um, but also we may introduce some other um, sort of metrics that can be um, tied back to frequency. Um, after that, we can obviously use the GPS coordinates we have to look at uh, more granular views of speed within the service. And then uh, finally, we could start to see if we can do anything with passenger numbers based on any occupancy data that we're being provided. Um, those are on our longer term roadmap. They haven't been fully scoped out yet. Um, but if you have any sort of feedback or suggestions on, on how those might um, be best covered, we're, we're really open to hearing them and it will help um, sort of produce really useful features for all of you. 
So I'm just going to switch my screen now to walk through the designs of, of the corridor functionality that I mentioned in a quick demo of the existing service as well. So if you just bear with me a second, I'm going to switch my screen. So within the service, um, we will be creating a new area called corridors. Um, and from here, you will have a list of corridors that will be saved to your organization profile. Um, hopefully the list will be more than one corridor. It should be quite a few um, within a local authority. Um, and this will be a series of stops. Um, along here, we will show you the number of journeys that have run along that corridor at the sort of time frame you've selected. Um, and also the average journey time and a graph of that journey time um, over the time period you've selected as well. Obviously, if you have many of these, you can search for a corridor by the name that you saved it as. Um, and I'll just go through the process of creating that corridor as well. Um, so you should be able to click to create a corridor. You should search for a stop and also add a name for that corridor. Um, we will return sort of matching stops so you can search either by the stop name or the stop ID. Um, and when you found the stop that you want to start creating a corridor from, you can do this. Um, and you can choose um, obviously from any of the sort of following stops along service patterns that run along these roads. Um, you can start to build out the corridor um, and choose the required stops. Um, you obviously will keep repeating that um, until you've built out the corridor that you need to monitor um, any metrics for. Um, at that point, you know, that may be up to 10 stops, for example. Um, you can finish creating the corridor and that will be saved um, to your user profile um, and also your organization profile for others to view as well. Once you save that down, um, you'll be able to click into these corridors um, and see some summary metrics. So this will tell you the number of um, journeys that have run along this corridor, the number of different services. Um, so it may not be one service using the corridor, it will probably be multiple if it's quite a busy um, area of, of um, your locality. Um, and then it will also display things like average journey time and also if any journeys weren't recorded, so perhaps they didn't run um, down the corridor, but they were expected to. We'll show them there as well. Um, further down the page, you'll see these graphs for journey time, so you can select any period of time you want and see how this journey time has varied um, across um, the time range selected. And you can also see the variance of that journey time, so that's quite important to know whether that's sort of tightly um, spread or, or really quite widely spread out as well. Um, you will have graphs to sort of aggregate that to the time of day, the day of week, and also see a distribution of that as well. Um, so we, we understand from speaking with you that the distribution and the spread of this journey time is quite an important thing to be looking at and not just the average. Um, if you want to see that how the different services have performed, you can do that as well. Um, at the bottom of the page, you'll be able to see these different services and also their average journey time to see if there are any particular services that may be contributing um, more than their fair share to the average journey time across that corridor. Um, if I just move back to the top of the page, not only will you be able to see those metrics across the entire corridor, you'll be able to sort of select an individual um, stop to stop link on this corridor um, and the page will update and show new information um, just for that specific stop to stop link. So you can start to drill down into some more granular, granular detail. Perhaps you can look at um, stops before a roundabout, after a roundabout um, as an example um, to see where um, significant um, additions to journey time might might being might be being found. So hopefully that was a useful view of what's next. Um, I just wanted to run over the existing functionality within the service for those of you who haven't seen it before. Um, I'll just focus on the on-time performance section so we have plenty of time for questions. Um, as you log into the service, you'll have your dashboard um, currently, which will group all of the operators together that are assigned to your organization. Um, you'll be able to see um, on time, early and late metrics for those operators. And on the right, you'll be able to see live vehicle counts and feed status as well. Um, you can choose individual operators if you want to see quick summaries of, of those operators and the top three and the bottom three um, lines for those operators as well. 
if you click into on time performance um, you'll be able to see a list of operators you may want to sort those um, to find the best or the worst performing operators um, when you found an operator that you wish to view um, you can click into that operator within here you can see graphs of on time performance um, you can see um, summaries for the time of the day so um, the same metrics aggregated to specific hours in the day or specific days of the week so you can start to see if there are particular times or days where um, the operator is doing particularly well on, on, or not that well you can add filters if you want if you want to see particular days of the week so perhaps you just want to view a long time range just at the weekends you can do that um, or just at particular times of the day such as the morning rush hour the data that you're being returned defaults to showing you information for all of the stops. You can choose just to see that for timing points if you wish um, as well. Below, you can start to drill down into some more detail um, by viewing and clicking on individual lines. Um, and within here, you'll be able to see a, break, a similar um, set of graphs and a breakdown of the stop to stop performance, um, including um, counts of scheduled departures, recorded departures, um, and the number on time early and late at each stop for the times you've selected. Uh, within here, um, we have introduced um, this map view as well. So you can start to see um, a sort of geographical view of this route and um, the sort of colors and, and the icons uh, are presented here, uh, here to kind of draw your attention to areas along the route um, that are sort of abnormally late or abnormally early for this route. So you can start to kind of drill down into the detail and see if there are any kind of changes you can make either to the network or to the timetables that may help improve this. Um, and a similar view here of delay information can be found. Um, so that's a quick review of the on-time performance section of the service. Um, I will now um, jump back uh, to answer any questions that there have been, um, or Amy can shout out if there have been any that haven't been answered. Thanks very much, Dan. Yeah, we've had um, a few questions in the chat. We've been um, sending out some invitations to people who um, hadn't yet received one or whose uh, invitations has, had expired. So thanks to everybody who's been asking for that in the chat. I think that we've almost got through all of those. Um, there have been a few questions aside from that. So there was one question from Neil to do with mode share um, and how mode share for BSIPs um, measurements could be calculated. Um, that's something that isn't within the scope of analyzed bus open data. I don't know, Tim, whether you want to say anything in that regard, though. Um, other than it's it's not within the the current remit <laughs> of of BSIP, it would be very interesting to um, have a national standardized way of doing it, um, rather than each uh, authority having to work it out and everybody doing it. Um, slightly differently, so um, that's that's perhaps something that uh, we should uh, take back to the uh, to the open data team and see what could be done because the DFT has quite a lot of that data already because it it knows rail patronage and and tram patronage and um, walking and cycling data. Um, so uh, they they ought to be able to put it together, um, and um, yeah, I take your point, Neil. That um, yeah, census output area would be uh, would be a good low level place to start um, to to see effects of um, local area changes. So yeah, we'll take that back to the DFT. Thanks very much, Tim. Um, and then there's been a few questions um, from a number of people to do with uh, directional information. And so, um, for example, um, somebody mentioned that the corridor functionality would be useful as long as it separates out the direction of the service. Um, and there were a few other comments um, along um, a similar line. I don't know, Dan, if you just want to um, explain um, the current situation in regard to directional information 
Yeah, so so in terms of the corridors themselves, as you create them, um, it will present to you a sequence of stops which um, are all in the same direction, so to speak. Um, so it won't be sort of aggregating, it shouldn't be aggregating journeys that are happening in different directions. So you would, if you wanted to monitor in both directions, probably have to create two um, corridors in order to do that, but that should be possible. Thanks very much, Dan. Um, and Philip has asked, in the existing on-time performance section, can I filter for just those services in my area or I get every service for an operator at the moment? Again, do you want to just talk through that, Dan? Yeah, the, I guess the short answer is right now it's not possible, but that is something that's on our roadmap um, that we'll probably be looking at um, after we've got this next um, release of functionality out, as, as we've had that requested a few times. Um, but that is, is to be looked at um, next. Thanks, Dan. Um, there has also been a question from Philip to do with access to the map option in the on-time performance. I just wonder, Dan, if you would mind sharing your screen again with the Analyze service and just showing everyone how to get to the map functionality, please. Yeah, so Thanks. within here, um, if you click into operators, there won't be um, any option at the operator level. Um, you have to drill down into the individual line level, at which point there should be a second option um, for the map here. Um, we have had um, some feedback that it is not always the easiest thing to find, so we have also some items in our backlog to look at to make this much easier to find and more prominent and obvious on the service. Um, so hopefully in the future that, that should be easier to find, but you need to drill down into the line level, and then you should be able to find the map. Thanks very much, Dan. Um, there's also a question from Mark about will the ABOD data be available to third party developers via an API and if so, any time scales? Um, at this point, Mark, um, Analyze Bus Open Data is closed access um, and so DFT have asked us to provide access to DFT um, and their um, departments within D DFT, for example, DBSA and OTC. Um, along with authorities and operators. So in terms of third parties, unfortunately, at this point, um, the ABOD analyses aren't available um, outside of those user groups. Um, but we, we recognise that there is interest from, from other groups. And so that is something that we're passing back to DFT um, and, and is something that they might consider longer term. Um, and Nicholas has asked, are you looking to provide an ability to export data views to Excel? Um, again, Dan, do you want to comment on that? Sure, and I think um, that may also be covering Helen's question, the next question as well. Um, yeah. Yes, we are looking to do that, and we were looking to do that sooner um, than, than is possible at the moment. Um, the sort of journey time functionality that we've been putting together over the last um, couple of months has taken a bit longer. Um, so it will be pushed back a, slightly. I guess we can reach out um, and talk to you in detail about when that may be after I've spoken with the team, um, if, if we need to sort of nail down something more precise. Thank you, Dan. Um, and I can see, Philip, that you've found the map now. That's really great. And as Dan says, we're looking into ways to make that a bit more prominent in the service. So um, yeah, glad that you've got it now though, that's great. Um, and then John has asked, are you able to share your roadmap? Dan, again, do you want to comment on that? Um, probably not right now. Um, I, I don't have any problem with sharing it. I guess maybe we will talk to DFT, Amy, and then see if we yeah. can share that more widely. Yeah, and so just to explain that a little bit more, John, um, we um, were kind of uh, under instruction, I guess, from DFT about how they want us to prioritise the development of different features. And so, as Dan says, it's just something that we would probably need to check with DFT um, about um, what, what should be shared. So, yeah, we'll look into that. Um, and then Michael has um, sent me a message directly to ask what what data we're planning to export to Excel um, when that feature comes in the roadmap. Dan, do you want to comment on that? Um, essentially, the 
all of the data that's available within the user interface um, will be exported in some form in, into an Excel or a CSV. Um, so that will be the sort of extent of that functionality when it's available. Thanks, Dan. Um, I think that we have covered all of the questions that have come in the chat so far. So we'll just give it another couple of moments in case anyone's got any questions that they haven't asked yet. Um, so Neil has just asked, Dan, any GeoJSON exports for the maps? Um, we haven't planned that, but I can take that back to the team and, and discuss with them um, to see if there's anything simple we can do. Um, but I can't promise anything because it, it hasn't been um, in the plan yet. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Neil. And Angharad has asked, um, when will the corridors functionality be available? Um, we're planning to get that out um, in a few weeks' time. Um, I can't give a precise date at the moment, but, but that's the sort of time scale that we're looking at. Thanks, Dan. And again, I'll just give it another couple of moments in case there's any other questions to come. Uh, just whilst we're waiting to see if there are any more questions to come, um, I'll just briefly say um, we will send out um, a feedback survey at the end of this um, webinar. I'll post it on the chat shortly so that you have access to it straight away. And it will also um, come out on an email from Artig as a follow-up to this webinar. Um, we would really appreciate it if you could spare um, just a couple of minutes. It's not a very long um, survey, but if you can spare a couple of minutes just to let us know your thoughts, and it also gives you an opportunity to provide any more feedback that you've not had a chance um, to provide so far or to ask any questions that you might want to uh, directly to us. Um, as Dan said earlier in the presentation, um, user feedback is um, helping us uh, tremendously to um, continue developing the service and it's really important that we factor in um, user feedback um, for for our longer term plans and so yeah if, if everybody would be happy to spare a couple of minutes to to let us know what your thoughts are um, we'd really appreciate that um, thanks very much Andrew and Neil for your feedback on the chat um, there's also a question um, about comparisons function, um, i.e. year on year. I don't know, Dan, if you just maybe want to go back onto the service and just show the date pickers. So so we, you can pull up um, stats from any time in the past as, as a direct comparison. Um, so obviously here you can select and, and you can go back as far as there is data in the service, which will be sort of the end of last year. Um, so you can see a sort of entire timeline of that data if you wish. Um, in terms of compare, comparing year on year, um, we haven't got anything um, right now, and I guess perhaps we could could reach out to you and talk talk in in person about that and see um, if there's any sort of functionality we could build in future that might um, be more useful than than what we have already. Thanks very much, Dan. Um, I think that we might have reached the end of questions, so. Um... I'll hand back um, to you, Dan, and, and to you, Tim, to finish up. Um, there's nothing extra from me, um, but I'd just like to thank thank everyone um, for attending. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Amy. Um, hopefully, um, there's uh, able to uh, release the uh, the corridor features in time for. Um, the um, plan session, which a number of you have already booked on to for corridors and route segment analysis on the 3rd of November. Um, so uh, that perhaps um, sets uh, Dan and his team a, a deadline for uh, for releasing it. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll rearrange. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so there's a session um, on the 3rd of November on corridor, all being well. Um, we've done uh, a number of um, other events about analysed bus open data service. Um, those have all been recorded and the links to those are all available on the RTIG website. So please do feel free to uh, to, to bob on there and, uh, and have a watch um, of those um, and future ones will appear on there as well. Um, 
we've um, also done a number of um, events um, to do with um, bus priority, a significant part of um, the bus strategy and um, bus service improvement plans. Um, probably the, the first one to start out looking at is, is the one here, and I've posted the link in the chat. Um, but um, I'd also like to um, ask you a question um, about how can um, we as RTG help you now that you're sort of a long way through developing your um, plans, um, looking to actually how you might implement them, what you might need to do to achieve those um, things, as well as as you uh, get towards developing your um, enhanced partnerships and um, franchising, if that's something you're looking at. Um, so very interested to know what we can do to help, what information you um, would find useful, um, what research you would think that we could be doing that might help you, um, what sessions. Um, please do feel um, free to let me know and we will um, see what we can do to help. So um, I'd like to thank um, Dan and Amy and Patrick for their um, input this afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for coming um, and your time this afternoon. Um, and if you want to uh, get in contact with me, um, contact details for Artig are on the screen now. Um, I'd like that with that, I think it's probably a uh, thank you for your time again and um, have a good rest of the day. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.